biggest issue in dating. One issue in dating is that what you're hearing is we, we, we're hearing the men conversation from the men. The women are hearing the men, women conversation from other women. This woman is going to talk about what it was like to go from trad wife to divorced. Uh-oh. You guys want trad wives? I tell you, man, there's no more trad wives. I mean, a certain group of people still have them. But the likelihood you'll get one is slim to none and slim just not died. I mean, I, I want to give you hope, but Jesus, this is a trad wife. Look at her goddamn blouse. Looks like she made that herself. That's a, a little shawl. It really is super fucking amazing to not be fucking stuck in a shitty marriage and get to make your own fun. It's like the funnest shit ever. The funnest shit ever. I don't have to ask nobody's fucking permission. I can get the fucking flower baskets I want. I can get the goofy little fucking sweater I want that I think is cute as fuck. <clears throat> like, I thought it was just toothpaste and toilet paper and shit, but I get to make all the motherfucking decisions. It really is. Now. This is a woman that realized that there's a bigger world out here than being a trad wife and serving and cooking and dicing up chicken nuggles, nuggets and breaking graham crackers and, and making tombstone pizzas and mac and cheese and shit like that. She said there's a bigger world out here. When she realized that, not when she was 24, when she was 44. And she sound like she deal with some ninjas. All right, she been dealing with some ninjas as of recent. All right, and smoking some weed. So she was a trad wife and she said she gave it all up. Now, you know, women have a whole new world out here. Now, they do not have the money part solved yet. All right. They don't have the get money part solved. That's why they got to go see tricks. All right. So they are going to have to go see some tricks in the middle of that. All right. Or then go find a gump at the end. But you're seeing these trad wives even discover, hey, I thought it was just toilet papers and toothpaste. Uh, I can get I can make my own decisions. I'm free. She looked like she'd been beaten down. I can make my own decision. I can wear my hair the way I wanted. I can cut my hair. I can wear the makeup. I can be out in these streets. Okay. In these now, streets? unfortunately, you have women her age ready to go back and be trad wives because that's their reality. Now they're like, I want to be a wife. I want to cook and clean. <laughs> All right. So that's the reality we're dealing with. These are issues that we're dealing with here. We have another woman that said, oh, where were the guys that said God, man, and wife? Where was the woman? Where was the, well, there were some women. Where were the men that said, God, man, and wife in marriage? I got one for you. I got one for you. If you think marriage is between God, man, and wife, I got one for you. All right, so here we go right here. This woman said, after 15 years, God said, this is not your husband. Oh, no. So there's your God marriage there, sir. There's your God Man and wife. God told her to get a divorce. Ninja. Good luck out here, bro. There you go. There's, there it is. There's your Christian. There's your godly marriage right there. So you thought you had it because God told your wife to be a Proverbs 31 woman. But guess what? God also told her apparently to get divorced. <laughs> I told you, that, man, dude, you could have a godly marriage and a Christian marriage. It ain't going to save you out here when you take your ass to the state. Told you. <laughs> All right. Y'all didn't just want to fight me for no reason. All right. Let's see what she says. All right. Here we go. We were together for 15 years. We were married for seven. It was a beautiful thing. And we still had like, you know, the, the normal ups and downs. But I will say we didn't have a relationship where we argued all the time. Yeah. We didn't have a relationship where we were dealing with infidelity or okay. stuff like that, yeah. you know, during those times. We didn't have that type of relationship. So because we were friends first, Yeah. you know, so it was always like, that's my home. It was just something in me as a woman. <laughs> I cannot explain it to where. <laughs> It was like I was battling myself. You feel like uh -huh. I'm trying to do the right thing, but it's something that's pulling me away from doing this. But what? why would it pull me away from my husband? I'm battling in the midst of that with religion, like with the people telling me at church and what I'm getting spiritual advice from. And oh. then I'm battling with it with myself. Like, why am I feeling this way? I'm talking about I'm going to therapy for myself to figure oh. out why am I feeling this way towards my husband? 
And the way I was feeling, it wasn't like I felt resentment towards him. It was almost like I was withholding a piece of me that I couldn't give him. I'm sitting on the couch and we had a small issue and that small issue was back that pattern. Now, mind you, we done went to therapy for this. We done had talks for this. I done talked to you. What did you get from this when we after I said it? To yeah. make sure you understand, because yeah. I love to communicate. And I'm sitting. This music, Jesus. All right, I don't care about the rest. I don't care about the rest. But as you can see, the marriage will is undefeated. Whether you follow God, the devil, Satan, Jezebel, the, the black Moses, I don't care what you say. The marriage will is undefeated. Y'all can't defeat it. All right, you can take your woman to God and take her to the altar and you can take her to the burial site of Christ himself. And that ain't going to save y'all ninjas out here. That ain't going to save y'all. Not with the mindset and the spirit of just the woman. I mean, even in your own godly Bible, Eve was corrupted. Even the fable and the folklore of the uh, Lilith, she was corrupted. All right, so, and these people were supposedly made, made from God. Hey, man, good luck out here, brothers. Y'all out here trying to roll the dice, and y'all had 15-year marriage right there under God, and she went through the church, and she fell for the Jezebel spirit. Mm. <laughs> right? She fell for the Jezebel spirit. Hey, man, I'm not out here to fight what should be. I'm just using my own data. Christians and secular have on-par divorce rates. There's almost no difference. You would think the disparity would be different between godly marriages and stately marriages. And the disparity is not that different. It's somewhat close. Oh, man. All right, the biggest problems in relationship here, the dine and dash date. All right, here we here. He dined and dashed. A woman trying to foodie call him. Take a look at this guy right here. Okay. Oh, the humanity. I dined and dashed on a hinge date. And let me tell you why. So on a first date with someone online, I'm thinking something casual, right? Something easy, something, nothing crazy, right? This woman comes back with, I want hibachi. And I was like, hibachi? Hibachi. So I go, oh, okay, I guess. I get there with to meet this girl for hibachi. And she brings a friend with her. And she goes, hey, would it be cool if my friend just jumps in with us, hangs out? I guess. I mean, she's already here. Why don't I tell her, go away? So we sit down. We start kind of hanging out, talking, getting to know each other, stuff like that. Both of these women start ordering a bunch of drinks. And I'm like, okay. And then they start ordering appetizers. The, the guy, the cook, he goes, what do you want? And I go, I would like just chicken and rice. I'm a simple man. The girls go, we want surf and turf. I go, you want surf and turf? They go, yeah, yeah, surf and turf. And I'm like, okay. These girls think I'm stupid. I'm not. We hang out, have fun, do our thing. And I'm just kind of enjoying the moment, but I know what the heck's going on. But time goes by and we're ready to pay the tab. And the cook guy goes, all right, how are we splitting up the bill today? The girl goes, all on one. So I'm like, what the hell did this girl say? I tell her, hey, do me a favor. You just box up my food real quick and I'm gonna go to the restroom. She goes, yeah, yeah, no problem. Guess where I went? I didn't go to the restroom. I went in my car and I went home. You think I'm stupid? I'm not. You paid my bill. Thanks. All right. They probably didn't pay the bill, but good good conversation there. They probably got out of the way to pay that bill by dropping some neck in the back of the kitchen. There's barbecue in there. All right. But uh, yeah, uh, that's an issue in dating that people don't realize why I'd say restaurant dates are not the most ideal dates because it sets up for finesse and manipulative people like the people that he was exposed to. First of all, if you show up to a date and the woman brings a friend, you know something ain't on the up and up, but you got to get out of there. All right, that's complete disrespect. Um, It's immature, and I don't even know why you would proceed further on that one unless you might have thought you were getting a threesome, which you're most likely not. You're not going to get a threesome. They're not there for that. They're there to finesse. Now, this is what happens then when the guys make these issues. The women will say, well, I wouldn't do that to you. And proceeds to probably do that to you. And this have done that to many men prior to you. So um, what, some of the biggest issues in dating is that men are being targeted from finessing. And then, you know, they come out here trying to figure it out. Speaking of targeting for finessing, we have this one. It says, when you know she's calling to tell you about her problems so she can beg. And take a look at that English here. Jesus. I mean. Mm. Is that African? What is this? Look at this, bro. Man, we are gone as a civilization, as a society. If this is how we're typing right now, I get it. Language evolves, but Jesus. <laughs> All right. 
right there. We got can with a K. We got you as in place of Y-O-U, and we have no with no W. I mean, I make mistakes, but, man, we getting out of control. All right, but let's see here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello? What up, though, baby? What you got going? Nothing. Just sitting here stressed out. What you, what you stressed out for? I got all these bills I got to pay. I just caught a flat tire. All right, so I'm going to call you right back. Oh, all right. Go on for that. I can't go for that. Damn, she called me back. Yo. So you going to hang up in my face like that? I didn't try to hang up the phone. I, I had a call, a FaceTime coming through. I had to answer. Uh, what, 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 what's going on, though? What's wrong? I was trying to tell you before you hung up, somebody broke into my back window last night. Damn, that's crazy. Everybody you know somebody here. broke up into mine, too? Okay, that's cool, but let me finish telling you what's going on with me, and then I'm behind on my bills. Man, that shit crazy. Hey, you know my you rent, my rent due, too. Like... Like, it's just like we both going through things. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you. You pray for me. When you get your shit together, you call me. When I get my shit together, I'm going to call you. All right? Bye. <laughs> all right. So this is another big issue in dating, which does reflect the issues that women are doing. They're out here having a party, 304 and doing what are they doing, focusing on their career, no needing no man. A lot of these things that we're telling you they're doing, we can't stop it. There's no shame in them out of it. But what you have to understand is on the back end, they're doing a lot of this begging. All right. I'm stressing. I don't know what to do. Can't pay my bill. They're doing a lot of this begging. So men that are not, you know, not ready for this, you're going to get a, you're going to get a, what do they call it? You're going to attract these type of women. But almost, I mean, listen, uh, almost all women are dealing with this issue. Almost all women are dealing with this issue where they're now in this economy getting crushed. And they are not paying their obligations. They're also paying their makeup and their hair, maybe their nails and all of that. Maybe they going on trips. But I'm going to tell you, they come back, they ain't got the rent money. They ain't got the rent money. So they're having to turn to monetize dating, in a sense, to patch it up. Yes, they're, they're turning to it. It's crazy. Dry begging all the time. And they're trying to hit everybody for 200 bucks, 20 bucks here and there so they can pay their bills. All right, so here we go right here. The biggest problem in dating. Let me know, let me see here. I think I have another clip. Oh, uh, let's play this one before we play the main, main clip. This woman says, is there truth in what this guy said? Listen to this and tell me, based on you, what you know, if you want to take red pill knowledge, PUA, dating coach knowledge, tell me if you agree and what this is she's describing here we go if this guy was lying to me or if this is a real thing the other day i'm on a dinner date with this guy we're on a great dinner date we have a lot of fun together and then after the dinner date he's like oh like i have some friends that are out like a block over let's go meet them and i'm like that sounds great so we go meet them there are girls there this long table and there's these women his guy friends and then him and i like sitting across chatting we're having fun it's very very obvious that we are romantically together i go to the bathroom and when i come back like two of these women are sitting like beside him they've they've and they're fawning over him they're kind of like hitting on him now he's doing all the right things he has his arms crossed he's like hitting my legs under the table with his feet definitely was not flirting back he was polite but he was not flirting because he was so respectful i'm like these women are hitting on him but who cares if we're walking down the street and he brings it up and i was like no you were super super respectful and like i appreciated that a lot it was just weird that they were hitting on you and he said something kind of interesting this is what he said it was like when i go out with just my guy friends women don't approach me like that it's when i'm with an attractive woman that other women hit on me and i was like so that just wouldn't happen if i wasn't there he's like i don't think that would have happened if you weren't there so a win is a win was he just saying this to make me more like to make me feel better about the encounter and like to pump tell me if this guy was lying okay you hear what she said here this is one of the big this is one of the biggest issues in 
dating is that you got the top 80%, 20% rule in effect. You have pre-selection in effect. You have social proof in effect. So a lot of guys think you're losing with hypergamy. I want you to listen. And this is called adapt or die, adapt or perish. Guys, hypergamy works in your favor long term. I know it sucks. I know it's terrible. I know when you're 22, you're going to lose your girl trying to level up, level up, level up. But it does work in your favor long term, especially if you're not trying to challenge yourself by getting bitches as a broke guy. You actually become somebody. Then what you're going to find out is that social proof is a part of hypergamy. Pre-selection is a part that works against them because they're starting to aim for and position yourself and jockey for and place themselves for top tier guys. Now, then you get choice. Your choices are monk mode, leave them alone, bang them out, pay them, date, marriage. That's part of the free agent lifestyle. You got to look at it. That's in the book. It's not a... This, this, this philosophy I'm teaching you is not a segregationist philosophy. Philosophy It's not remove yourself and then forever remove yourself, although you can. That's part of the philosophy. But it doesn't completely restrict you and say, oh, it's a never. And if you never read the book, you would never understand that, right? What will happen is you will start to find that women are playing a game with men based on who you're with. If you're a stranger danger, Odds are it's going to be harder if you look like you have options, not just with women, but in life, women will hover around you and you'll probably be around places where better women could be instead of the worst kind. When you start to position yourself, you put yourself up to another leverage level position. Now you're not around strags. All right. Now you're not around strags. So this is what it's called. Women are very predatory. Their hypergamy works against them more times than not. And what they'll do is, if they see a guy with a woman or an attractive woman, all of a sudden, they may even make themselves available to you. Now, women will tell you no, but that's a fact. All right, this is an absolute fact. I talk about this all the time. I don't care what woman I'm with. I could be with my daughter. I could be with my mother. I could be with a girl. It could be any woman. I could be with a woman. I could be with a friend. I could be with my maid, Rosalinda. If I'm outside, women will look over at me way more than when I'm with myself. And a little bit more than if I'm with a group of guys. Have you experienced this? You're by yourself. Woman's walking down the street. She's waiting for you to cut your eyes at her. And so she gives you nothing. She just walks by you like this. Now, she's using peripheral vision to see if you cut your eyes. She can certainly see you head turning. That's called a head turn. Okay? She's a head turner. So she's waiting to see you cut your eyes. Now, she might be wanting an approach. She might be just getting validation. But that's what will happen. Now, if I'm walking with a woman equal to her or any woman, that woman's going to look over at us. Is she going to highly likely look at over at us? This doesn't always happen, but there's a high likelihood that she'll look over. Now, is she looking over because she's interested in you? Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. Okay. She's not looking at you because she's interested. She's looking at you because you have a woman. Now, she's going to figure out, why do you have the woman? What, why is it that you have that type of woman? Why, how did he get her? How did she get him? What is it about him that got her? That's all she's doing. She's trying to figure it out. And many women are out there looking for some sort of attention or accolades or validation. So she's comparing. Okay, he got a fat woman. That's what I thought. He's with a fat white girl. All right, so that's what I thought. He can't get a woman like me. Or if the woman's on par with her. Oh, wow. Maybe I need to lower my standards. Maybe I need to raise my standards. Why is she with him? I wouldn't have never looked at him, but she has one like this is in their high. This is in their head. This is when these dating coaches are right. When they talk about dread game and competition anxiety, because it's true. Women are competing and that's how they compete. So this woman is describing the guy saying, hey, I brought a woman, a nice blue eye redhead. And the other women now found me interesting. 
Now they find me interesting. Now I don't need to drop a pickup line. Now I don't even have to cold approach. Now all of a sudden they position themselves so that now, oh, where did you get that shirt? I have a shirt like that or my boyfriend needs a shirt like that. I like that shirt. Now all of a sudden they're going to become more ingratiating. Then the cold approach is quick. So a lot of people will have women as wingmen. Okay, I had a woman, I had a woman that was a wingman and I had that social proof happen to me and she would invite me out. She was in these streets too. I still see her every now and then. She comments on my Instagrams. I know y'all niggas gonna look for her. But uh, I went to high school with her. I went to high school with her. We went to a small high school in the in the Conejo Valley. I mean, I thought she was cute. And we hooked up and we were friends and all that shit in high school. She was a senior, I was a junior. She ended up going to a Pac-12 university. Actually, now they're in the uh, big, I think they're in the big 12 now. But um, she ended up going to a university in Arizona. It didn't work out for her. She went out there and partied and probably uh, partied and bullshit and fucked. Then she came back. By that time, I was in a community college. So she came back. She was like, hey, I'm going to that community college next year. I was like, okay. And she was like, hey, first week of school, let's hang out. Okay. So she hanging out with me. Dude. I, that was the same girl from high school. I didn't realize she was a baddie. So by the time we get on the college campus, everybody like, oh, shit. Right? Who is that? All the girls are like, who you with? I'm just taking her around and be like, yeah, these are my homeboys. <laughs> right? So essentially what's happening is my social proof goes up, my status goes up, and her status shot through the fucking roof. All right, and I end up getting a girlfriend off of just hanging out with her. Just hanging out with her. Now, her status and profile rolls after that. She ended up dating like celebrities and basketball players. So by that point, by that point, um, she used to invite me out. She used to be like, hey, we going here, we going there. And she'd be in there, sections, VIP area, you know what I mean? Valet clubs and right there on uh, Ventura Boulevard in the San Fernando Valley. All right, and so she would invite me. I pull up in a Honda Civic at the valet. I got the lowest level Honda Civic. Ninjas is pulling up in Cadillac Escalades and shit like this. I'm pulling up with a Honda Civic. I go in there. I see her. She's like, oh, hey, jumps off. This is a girl. She's, she's a baddie. Jumps off. Hey, hug. She brings me in. Hey, this is this and this and this. She introduced me. Guess what? I don't have the cold approach. Women are talking to me, buying me drinks, buying rounds. I don't even have to spend no money. Men are buying drinks for the whole table. I'm getting a drink, right? Mm. This is an example of what I call the power of the female wingman and or the social proof or the pre-selection. Soon as she acknowledged me, it was easy peasy. Acknowledge me. Right? She ended up coming back one night with a friend, and it was, it was wild. All right, so they came back. They came back. That was like, let's go back to your house. Came back. Two girls sitting on my twin mattress. She was like, what you going to do? I was like, <laughs> all right. I was sitting there like this. Oh, the humanity. I was like, oh, I don't get these offers every day. Both of y'all, same time. All right, again, that's why I'm not a big guy talking about cold approach. Much of my success has very rarely been on cold approach. Much of it has been by status, social status, social proof, wingman. All right, it's mostly been on that. All right, that's what it's been on. And I ain't been a dude that had not a lot of options out here. But much of it has not been like I'm going to walk up to girls all day and just be in their face. Much of it is being by the right people, being in the right space, being around the right kind, that, that's what it's been. Social circle and all of that. She brought a referral to the ninja, all right? I think they were drunk and we went home. They got in the Civic. And it was like, we'll go home with you. I was like. <laughs> I was looking at their ass like. Wait a minute. Who are you? All right, anyway. <laughs> so anyway, look. That was wild college days right there. And they were two girls that was ninjas was starving over in the club. And they just happened to give a referral. Again, referrals are great. 
All right. Uh, anyway, they're going to come back and meet to me later on. Uh, but so I'll keep that story secret. The biggest problem in dating. Do you want to hear the biggest problem in dating right now? We're going to tell you. All right. Uh, the biggest problem in dating. Listen to this right here. Let me see if this woman is right. Let me see if this woman is right. Let me know if you agree. We got another blondie here. El Rubia, a little Natasha here. Let's see what she has to say. So a girl made a video about this on TikTok, and it's put in the most simple terms. I would say every girl I know right now wants a man who is masculine and a leader. And obviously that comes with, like, asserting dominance and all these things. And all these women want this. But then no women want to listen. They don't want to listen to the leader. So they want the leader, but then they're not going to listen. And it's so funny because it really comes down to, like, not listening to them is not only just extremely demasculating to them it's like so why would they want to be with you they would go be with a woman who's more feminine and like willing to listen this is not like i'm not talking about controlling crazy guys i'm talking about this is what a strong man in his masculine is so it's like when you're you know doing the whole feminine you know new wave feminism girl boss i don't listen to anyone then that's okay there's a reason why the statistics are saying that all you guys are going to be single and unmarried in the next like 20 years is because you're not listening Shout out to this woman. If I ever go to Finland or Norway, I'm looking for one of those. I'm going to just let you know right now. Now, there, I could go some places in America, but I just want the authentic kind. All right. I want the authentic. All right. But uh, that is one of the biggest problems in dating and relationships right now is that we do hear this sense that ninjas don't do this and ninjas ain't providing and they ain't doing this and there's no leaders. Trust me. Let me tell you, I'm a true leader. But this is the type of thing that happens. They still ain't going to listen to you. And this is proven because guys will say, coach, they'll listen to you if you keep them in check. And I say, exactly. Most of the time, we're not agreeing. No, we're not disagreeing. But that's exactly the point. I know women naturally shit test. I know women are not in a permanent state of being a woman. We're permanent. Most of us are the same every day. Women are a little bit chaotic. And they are one way one day, and the next day they're, they're another day. And there's various levels of degrees of this. Sometimes, most of the time, they're rebellious. And they typically have an inferiority complex because they're women. Now, they want to be seen as men and strong and dominant and doing it. But at the same time, they need help and assistance when they need help. So you got to identify when that is, but you can't step over the boundary. Like, you got to help them financially, but you can't control the finances. They're like, I don't want you to, I want you to just give me the money, right? I want you to give me mentorship and instruction, but I can choose when I can listen to you and when I don't listen to you. So they can invoke the shit test. They can test you to get you out of actual listening. So in certain circumstances, she'll listen. Sometimes she won't. And they almost have to be broken down, like broken down. Like you got to get them to break fucking down and you can. Let me, let me show you this. Let me show you this right here. I'm going to tell you where you could get a woman. Uh, I'm going to tell you when they start listening. I'm going to show you when they start listening. Right when you got them right about here. It's right here. You ever see this movie Get Out? So when they listen, they going to have to be broken down like a molecule. They're going to have to be down and out. Broken down at their wits end. I mean, up shit's creek. I mean, like it's, it's, it's the atomic bomb is about to drop on them. But they will fuck their life up for weeks, months, and years. And it is only until that they are about to crash out, sunk in place, <laughs> that then they might listen for a few minutes. Other than that, they have this constant sense of, I, I want to be strong. I can do it. I can't. But really, it is very treacherous territory in today's time for you to accept this role of leadership with women because when they're ready to go, not even God or the devil can save you. Right here. Not even God can save you because they'll dip out on God. They don't even listen to God. Everything God has written for them, they ain't listening to it, but they will still invoke the name of God when they need to. 
All right. So not even God can control these women and, and they don't even listen to the Lord. So I have no faith or confidence in this working out. Even if I have to keep her in check, this is not worth keeping a woman in check. So I look at keeping a woman in check, not as a skill. It's an exercise in futility. You're eventually going to crash out and burn trying to keep this woman in check because she can always say, well, at the end, I don't have to listen. Where's that other woman, the, tra the track on? Right here. At the end of the day, I'll just stop listening when I want to stop listening. And you have to look at the time that you've wasted into imputing and conversing with her and giving her information and putting her up on game and keeping her in check and keeping her on a tight leash. And then all of a sudden, it's off or not. All right, it's time to go. Skedaddle. All right, so let's play the clip again of the woman saying that really this is the biggest problem in our romantic dating uh, line right now is that women want leaders, but they don't want to listen. Who? Let me see if I, I'm going to put up a poll. Women want leaders, but they don't want to listen. All right, here we go. I made a video about this on TikTok, and it's put in the most simple terms. I would say every girl I know right now wants a man who is masculine, and a leader and obviously that comes with like asserting dominance and all these things and all these women want this but then no women want to listen they don't want to listen to the leader so they want the leader but then they're not going to listen and it's so funny because it really comes down to like not listening to them is not only just extremely demasculating to them it's like so why would they want to be with you they would go be with a woman who's more feminine and like willing to listen this is not like i'm not talking about controlling crazy guys i'm talking about this is what a strong man in his masculine let me tell you man this the the, the ideas again the software the software what are the what is programmed into the software of uh the modern american woman um not not accepting abuse not being a slave, you know, 50-50, uh, not dealing with controlling men, not dealing with insecure men, divorce. Divorce is in the software already. It's already programmed in there. You're just trying to delay it or or prevent it, all right? But she already has divorce on, on her mind. It's already, in, it's, already, it's already downloaded into her software. She already knows what it is. It's not like she don't know. She already knows what the outcome is. So she just doesn't want to invoke it or you just don't want her to invoke it. So you're just controlling her unleashing the divorce. So these things are already implanted into them. And now you're just trying to overcome all of this implanting. It, it, guys, today it's almost impossible. She has the ability to rebel and jump out there as the victim. You're going to almost never be the victim in any circumstance. And they know this. They're fully aware of it. They're fully aware of it. That's why they keep saying he was controlling, he was insecure, he was abusive. And most of the time, you're like, damn, how many men are like this? Well, all of them. Now, why would you end up trying to do this as a means to show what type of masculinity you have when this is demasculating, as she said, emasculating? Women who emasculate men should be by themselves. Now, I know there's a, it is what it is. A lot of women just don't like men. I, I'm fine with it. That's why I have a 90% rejection rule. I reject 90% of women. They just don't qualify. It's okay. But I worked hard for that position. But emasculating a man shows a lack of femininity that I just don't want to be associated with. I can't associate it with it, nor do I have the time to manage it. That's something that you have to come in with. And the women that are coming in with it, possibly might have a better chance of getting what they want in the relationship marketplace, in the relationship marketplace. But you as a man should not be fiddling with women, convincing them to submit. They should come in with the idea, I'm willing to submit to you, like I'm in submission to you, or I'm a submissive. That should be the orientation from the beginning, okay? Mm -hmm. If she says, I'll submit for the right guy, and she tells you that, that should be an automatic rejection because she's already saying you ain't the right guy or she's going to find out if the guy is right. It should be coming in with that if that's what you're looking for or it's coming in with these roles. I'll cook and clean if conditions, but that's what you're looking for. Or I'll be feminine 
with this guy, but masculine with that guy. Or I'm feminine when money is um, taking my bills are taken care of when they're not taken care of. I'm masculine. You see what's happening here. A lot of you guys are trying to figure out how to negotiate this and you're negotiating it in the wrong way. Long term, always long term. You got this is not going to work out. We just are in a world today where it's easy to emasculate men. And here's the sad part that people won't tell you. Here's the sad part. In the world, the woman is strong, brave. She's in her masculine alpha woman and all of these things that they want to be thumping her chest. More often than not, in private, she's in full submission for at least one man. In the outside world, she doesn't portray that. Behind the scenes, she's in full submission for at least one man. It could be multiple men. I have no idea. But there is at least one man that she just, meow, no words, no rebellion, and so forth. All right, now, again, time will tell. But today's women are actually going to be crucified for coming out here saying they are in full submission for a man. And yes, yes, many times it's their work, boss. <laughs> yes, okay. But they are, in fact, many feminists are in that position as well. That's similar to a lot of guys are super-duper hyper-masculine in person. They get behind closed doors and they're a simp. They, they're, the actions that they take would classify them as a simp by the majority of men. But outside, they're muscular, they're strong, they talk that shit. This is including some of your red pill guys. But when they get behind closed door, they in simp nation. Now, this is because maybe they're not really simping, but they would be classified as simping based on how they present themselves. As soon as they get behind closed doors, they a big old goofy ass simp. So we have both men and women playing this game of public She wants to be strong and brave and a conqueror and wealthy and rich and CEO by 34 or or 32 or 31. She wants to be CEO. But behind the scenes, she's bankrupt. Behind the scene, she needs a buying fix. Same thing with men. Up front, I ain't going to never have a bitch do this and a bitch will never do this and I ain't never paying her. And guess what? As soon as you get behind closed doors, they they tricking or simping. Okay? Mm. But let's play her video one more time all the way through just at least so we can see her. The ice queen here, the blue eye blonde hair, the Barbie, all right? And are those extensions possibly? Let's continue. So a girl made a video about this on TikTok and it's put in the most simple terms. I would say every girl I know right now wants a man who is masculine and a leader. And obviously that comes with like asserting dominance and all these things. And all these women want this, but then no women want to listen. They don't want to listen to the leader. So they want the leader, but then they're not going to listen. And it's so funny because it really comes down to like not listening to them is not only just extremely demasculating to them. It's like, so why would they want to be with you? They would go be with a woman who's more feminine and like willing to listen. This is not like, I'm not talking about controlling crazy guys. I'm talking about this is what a strong man in his masculine is. So it's like when you're you know, doing the whole feminine, you know, new wave feminism, girl boss, I don't listen to anyone, then that's okay. There's a reason why the statistics are saying that all you guys are going to be single and unmarried in the next like 20 years is because you're not listening. All right, you're not listening. I'm going to tell you something, guys, man. In today's world, it's hard to get women to listen. It's hard to get women to listen. They they just don't want to listen. They think they have it figured out. Wait, this clip. Check me out on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel for the best morning live stream every weekday. And, of course, we're back for the evening live streams as well. Check out the times in the feature channels on this channel right here. And also, the links are in the description box. I will see you there. New, 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 new world order.